Necessity is the plea for every infringement of human freedoms. We've got to get ourselves out of this quagmire of buffoonery and realize that criminal activity is criminal activity no matter who does it. So you got donut operator watching a criminal action happen, but because the guy's got a clown suit on, he gets a pass. Here's the deal. Here, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. So here's the deal. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. Well, here's the deal. But here's the deal. So here's the deal. And here's the deal. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. Because here's the deal. Here's, here's the deal. Either give me your ID or you go to jail. How about that? Catch me outside. How about that? How about that? How about that? Here's the deal. Welcome back to the Here's the Deal channel. Now we're going to go over donut operators handling of the Zach Bryan traffic stop. Listen, listen to what he has to say. Initial approach. Maybe you like him real quick. Yes, sir. And you're going to need to pull in there. We just stopped in the road. Sure. Out. Sorry about that. I wasn't All right. thinking. All right. So he's being cool. Cops just like, hey, pull in there. He's like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Okay. So this truck pulls up. Is that his entourage? I mean, could be our bodyguard or something. I don't think he would. He's not the type of guy to have bodyguards just rolling around town, though. So yeah, probably a buddy or something. So when you're on a traffic stop, you're detained, you know, and you, you should stay in your car unless the officer asks you to get out. And then if they do ask you to get out, you have to, according to the case law, Pennsylvania versus Mims. You have to get out of your car, according to Pennsylvania versus Mims. And he's right. That's what the Supreme Court case says in Pennsylvania versus Mims. But you know what this means? This means that Pennsylvania versus Mims in the mind of donut operator trumps individual rights. Pennsylvania versus Mims trumps your right to be secure in your prisons, houses, papers, and effects. Pennsylvania versus Mims says because of officer safety, you've got to get out of your car. Whereas in the fourth amendment, the cops swore to protect, defend, and uphold. And the Supreme Court justices who swore to protect your fourth amendment right trampled your fourth amendment right by approving Pennsylvania versus Mims. That's where this guy's mind is. So from the get go, he is set. He's dead set on fanning the flames of tyranny. Also, other people can't be coming up to the car and stuff or getting in it if they're not involved in the traffic stop. No oh, really? What, what, what law is that? What law is it where you can't get out of your car and ask questions as an American, a free American on American soil? Then he does this. I think it's a it's a plug for a sponsor or whatever. Now let's get back to it. Yeah, that made me a little nervous. Someone pulling up right next to him like that. Yeah. Yeah. You, no. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. Really? You need to get back in your truck. Does anybody know a law that says you can't walk up to a vehicle that's been stopped at a traffic stop? And they're not even on the road. It looks like he pulled into a parking lot on private property. Because you're interfering with officer discharge of duties right now. Either get back in your truck or go to jail. I don't care which. I'll go to jail. So there you go. The ultimatum. The quintessential ultimatum from the cops. You either do what I say or you're going to jail. There ain't no in-betweens. Here's the deal, partner. This is how it's going to go down. Let me explain something to you. <laughs> Wait, is that Zach Bryan? Is Zach Bryan in the truck or is he in the car? Okay. Now, just as a benefit of the doubt, I mean, just, just to give him some, some slack, it looks like he might be watching this video for the first time. He's not really clued into what's going on. And this is part of a live stream. So he's before a live audience having done no homework and he didn't really know what was going on. And then things started gelling in his mind. Yeah, that's okay. He said, I'll go to jail then. Uh, sir, your ID on you? Uh, yes, sir. I'm just, I'm just going to Boston. This is my girlfriend. I just woke up. My dog's in there. I shouldn't have said what I said. My name's Zach Bryan. That's my security guard. Okay. I, I, Who's I got, Zach Bryan? I don't know who you are. Uh, I'm just, I, I <laughs> saw it the BOK twice last month. I wasn't being tough either. I'm just... <laughs> he did. He ended up pulling the privilege card. Yeah, I, I sold out the BOK Center twice that last month. You know, he's going to tell this officer later. Have I? I invited forty of my your officers or forty cops to my show. I'm a backer of the blue, and this is why cops hate you. I'm trying to get the Boston set. I was thinking the security guard got pulled over. Okay, I mean he's being nice and respectful. We shouldn't have popped off with that. I'll go to jail. What, what's the issue with? him interfering with a, uh, my traffic stop. I apologize, I'm some not too sure, but uh, I'm with security. Okay, I'm traveling with him, and I'll, we just had a conversation. I wasn't sure how the exec was going to apologize for whatever. 
Sounds like the guy's from Australia. Yeah, he, he wasn't even on the traffic stop for four minutes. Yeah, he shouldn't have walked up and said, what's taking so long? Like, just let the cop give the ticket. Shouldn't have? What's wrong with that? If you're not free to walk up and ask what's taking so long, then you're not free. Then this isn't the land of the free home of the brave. I mean, really, what kind of country does donut operator want to live in? A donut operator that's controlled by the black tyrants of the Supreme Court that are going to hammer out some judicial decision called Pennsylvania versus MIMS or the Fourth Amendment right to be secure in your persons. I mean, which one is it? It can't be both. Can't be both. You got to pick one because they're diametrically opposed to one another. Be on their way. Yeah, I can tell by that haircut. He's definitely going to give someone a ticket. So these are insanely uncomfortable. I understand that, sir. We'll, 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 we'll change them in a minute. You may be putting one in a the hurry. They really ain't built for comfort to begin with. So I didn't do anything wrong? Well, yeah, you did. I asked you to leave and get back in your truck, and you said you weren't going to do it. Did you hear what the cop said? But I, I missed that the first time. The cuffs aren't built for comfort. What are they built for, officer? They're built for discomfort. As a matter of fact, they cause some people such discomfort that you leave them with a lifetime of injuries, nerve, you know, nerve damage. It's, it happens, it's, it happens in thousands and thousands of cases every single year where the cops put those things on too tight. And then they force you to sit on your hands and back against your, your cuffed wrists as they're tight. And there, there's edges on those stupid things. They could build them for comfort. But they don't. Why? Because they don't want to. Because if they did want to, they would have done it. Uh, okay. This is the yeah. second time this has happened to me in three days, actually. Well, because yeah. cops have just been like way too brutal on me. Because, hey, man, I, I had a cop. You an option. I, I, had a, I know, but, but I finish up the original stop. Mm -hmm. Let me finish up this one. So, I found the original stop, too. He gets put his, <laughs> puts his handcuffs on this one. Hey, Austin Calvert. <laughs> he gets, and it's funny to him. I, I hate the fact that anybody who's innocent and hasn't committed a crime, hasn't left a real material victim. I hate any thought of anybody being put in cuffs, but not done on operator. <laughs> you got to put in cuffs again. Not funny because I wouldn't want my sons or daughters to be put in cuffs. I wouldn't want anybody that I love to be put in cuffs. I don't want to be put in cuffs. I wouldn't want donut operator to be put in cuffs. Why? Because I'm a human being and I don't like to see or, or uh, like to hear of anybody being tortured. 68 and a 50. This started as a simple traffic stop, but then took a turn. So this was a couple days earlier. Address. I'm not really comfortable sharing that. You have to. Okay. You have to. Either you can give me the information that I need for my my ticket I'm going to give you, or you could go to jail. So Make yourself insecure in your person, or you're going to jail. Violate your constitutionally protected unalienable rights, or you're going to jail. Which one would you like to do? I'm not going to give you my address. Yeah, it's called obstruction. After that, the officer the tells car. the driver to get out of his truck. Go back to the front of my car. Okay. Yeah. Are you really arresting me? Put your hands behind your back. Are you really arresting me right now? No, are you really arresting me? Hey, he's got a T-Rex. Put your hands behind your back. If you fight. Black T-Rex. I got the go same one. This is crazy. What's crazy is you're not giving no, me the sir. information no, that sir. I need. Are you going to give me the information I need? I don't know the address, sir. Okay. So why didn't you just say that? A little bit of entitlement there. Yeah. I'm a famous musician. I don't want people to know where I live. Okay. I just went to your concert. You support law great. enforcement, yeah, right? Of course I do. I don't support this. Oh, this is crazy. I didn't want to share with you where I live. Sassy I'm boy. Famous and I don't want people sneaking onto my property. Just, oh, just because you're a famous musician doesn't mean you have to you you do deny information. Give me a ticket and you take me to Code jail. For. He keeps saying, I'll go to jail. I'll go to jail. And then, you know, three days later, he's <laughs> back doing this. There's no need for me to be handcuffed, actually. Yeah, you're on, right now, uh, there is because you're interfering with my traffic stop. Sir. And you wouldn't let me finish. I will. I will have. I will have your badge. Say it. Say it. This is why people do not like police officers. That does sound like where Zach Bryan is going with this. I will exercise my power over you is what he's saying. I will, I will, I will be the authority over you. It's going to cost you your job. So all these threats going back and forth, nobody, not Zach Bryan, not the officer, not donut operator right here is even considering the bedrock of rights by which, from which we must operate in order to secure liberty and repel tyranny. Where is it? It's, it's non-existent. That's why I said this video is super important. This is huge. Why? Because when you give away a little, you give away the farm. 
I understand. I, you know. I'm, no, I understand too, sir. I, I gave you not. No, yes, sir. No, you didn't. Did. Sir, no, sir, didn't. sir. I'm a 27 year old kid. And I said, <laughs> take me to jail then. I, was being... I don't think 27 year old means you're a kid. I'm just throwing that one out there to a 27 year old kid. I agree. Bag. I'm just going to say that on traffic stops from now on. I'm a 36 year old kid. I'm sorry. I'm a smart ass. I apologize immediately after. I know. And we will let me finish up this. I will, well, I will get back to my truck right now if you let me out of these handcuffs. Well, if you, if you don't, it's going to be a mistake, sir. I promise. You I know, know. I know every high I know every sheriff in Tulsa. Okay. What a f ah! dick, man. I, I, I let. I let. Oh yeah, Zach Bryan is being a, a quack. Kinda. He's operating on privilege. He thinks he's somebody. He's a famous guy. You don't do to me. Hey, I'm not just a regular person. You can't do it. But who else is being a quack? Who else? Oh, that's right. The road pirate who decided to use the violence of the state against a person who wasn't threatening to harm anybody. 40 of them going to my BRK show. You know, I know you don't give a f uh, You know, I would like to talk to Don Donut Operator. I would sit down and have a discussion with them. But we've got to talk about, you know, the framework and the foundation for the discussion has to be individual rights. And there's something about the statist mind. And when I say statist mind, I'm talking about somebody who gets up and applauds enthusiastically for the power of the state in order to secure, uh, you know, what do they call it? Law and order. Uh, what I would ask them is because there's, there's an inherent inconsistency and hypocrisy in being statist. You're either for freedom or you're against it. It's freedom or nothing is what it really is. Freedom or tyranny. Which one do you want? If you're riding the fence, you're for tyranny because you're inviting it in to everybody else. So I would sit down and, and have a, you know, hopefully a cordial discussion with him, hopefully absent of ad hominem attacks, which that's where people usually go. But you got to ask, hey, do we have the right to be secure in our persons? If we do, then why are you applauding? And using as a barrier to freedom, Pennsylvania versus Mims. You got to get out of the car. You got to do what the officer. What if the officer's wrong? Well, you still got to do it. You're not a roadside lawyer. But what is right in that situation? We're talking. We're literally talking about what is right versus what is wrong here. But like, this is just insane. I didn't say that. Second time is happening in three days. He's because you run your mouth and you don't give the officers information they need. Or you go up to a traffic stop and tell them to take you to jail. All so, right. so what is donut operator saying right there? You, you did not give the officer the information that he says he needed. And because of that, you deserve to be arrested. You deserve to have handcuffs, torture cuffs put on you. You deserve this because you wouldn't relinquish your address. That's what donut operator saying here. Hey, donut operator, you have the right to remain silent. You don't have, there is no obligation for anybody, even during a corporate traffic stop to give any more information than is required by even their own policies. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to try to get off into the weeds about right to travel and all that kind of stuff. But even, even in the darkest tyranny, even though they don't recognize it as tyranny, you got the right, you, you maintain and retain and should exercise your rights. But he's, he's condemning that. That officer is the slowest typer in the world. He's got them old, them old man words per minute. Click, click, click. I mean, I'd be a little irritated too if I had to sit in the car and wait for him to type up a ticket. I know man's writing two tickets a shift at this rate. Yeah, this makes me not want to pay to go to his concerts. And I was about to get Heather and I some tickets to go to one of his shows. Okay. So he's not going to go to this guy's concert because he doesn't like the way he handled the boys in blue, the thin blue line gang. What a, what a great way to make life decisions. So he calls his dad to get him to come get the truck. I thought he was just calling him because he was being a baby. Damn, yeah, he straight up arrested him. Okay, not doing anything wrong before counting another similar incident where he encountered law enforcement. Trooper completed the citation of the driver in the white pickup. He told the trooper, security guard for Brian, the affidavit said, Brian began complaining about the tightness of handcuffs and the trooper readjusted them for him. He should have just shut up after, after that first time. Brian then, he requested to be told his Miranda rights, which the trooper did. Which, by the way, cops don't have to read their Miranda writes to you unless they're asking you questions. Brian confirmed the driver of the white SUV was a security guard and stated the truth. They don't, you they don't have to read Miranda writes to you unless they're asking you questions. The, the, that's the, that's what the cops do. The cops are constantly asking you questions from the get go. Hey, how you doing? I'm officer. So-and-so where are you coming from? Where are you going? Is this your truck? Is this a rental? Uh, if you had anything to drink, 
you have any drugs in the car? Is there anything in the vehicle that I need to know about? Anything, any illegal substances? Anything that'll be stick me, jab me, poke me? I mean, they're constantly asking questions. It's just this flurry of nonstop stupid questions. Boys, you boys need checked. A bunch of <laughs> middle-aged white dudes arresting people. So he continued to be an ass. <laughs> that's why I got arrested. Trooper stated he had contact with the Craig County District Attorney about arresting him. Brian became apologetic, but still argumentative with the trooper before si stating he'd called the mayor. Come on, man. You're just digging yourself into a hole. The trooper then spoke to Brian's father over the phone and informed him the details of the arrest. The affidavit said Brian mentioned open containers of beer while on the phone call. He was having some road sodas at the same time. The father spoke to the trooper again, said he'd be calling the governor. <laughs> But he came back and made an apology video. I didn't know my situation at all. I felt like a child and it was ridiculous and immature. I pray everyone knows I don't think I'm above the law. I was just being disrespectful and I shouldn't have been. It was my mistake. He was a dick to the cops several times. He was asking to get arrested. I mean, he... Can you imagine? Okay, let's say you got carjacked and you started mouthing off to the carjacker and somebody got it on video. Is he going to actually sit there and say, man, you're being a, you're being a bad person to the carjacker. It's, he was... He was stealing my car. You were being disrespectful to the thieves who broke into your house at two o'clock. They were they were in my house. What are you talking about? It's no different. See, there's this magical, fictional, crazy thing that happens when there's a badge, uniform, and a gun, and the guy calls himself a police officer. This thing it 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 diffuses and disconnects the ability for the person who's watching this play out to exercise any kind of critical thinking. And that's what happens with this. That's why this, that's why this video is so important. Donut operator basically represents a whole group of people who think just like this. If it was just a regular carjacker, if it was just a regular, let's say you were driving down the road and some, somebody was hitchhiking, or maybe they pulled you over their, in their private car and they did you what a cop did. Well, everybody would see it as a criminal, but for some reason, the cop does the exact same thing and actually inflicts more harm and more economic terrorism on the motorist on the highway than a regular thief would have done. But everybody applauds him and says, hey, we're just trying to keep the road safe. It's in the name of safety. Hey. It's necessary. We got to do this. Like William Pitt the Younger said, necessity is the plea for every infringement of human freedoms. We've got to get ourselves out of this quagmire of buffoonery and realize that criminal activity is criminal activity no matter who does it. So you got donut operator watching a criminal action happen, but because the guy's got a clown suit on, he gets a pass. It's mind numbing.